Welcome to the sprint review. Who wants to start? Yeah, I can continue here. We have talked about the new login before. Um, I quickly show you the screen. Part of this sprint was a UI component which shows the current sessions. So yeah, if I was just logging in a user, the user is authenticated and the active session is shown uh, here. Um, yeah, from here I have the yeah, possibility to add another account, for example, and to clear the current session. If I was um, basically adding a new one, not logging that in, for example, um, and navigate to the accounts page, you can see that the session is not yet complete. User before was yeah just logged in a few seconds ago. From here, you can yeah just continue, or you can delete the session from here. So if I would add user again, it shows up here. Yeah, the clear um, basically clears the session from the cookie and also calls the Citadel API to clear it from the backend. And yeah, this was basically it. Cool. So uh, the migration of YDC defined external providers uh, to a specific template so uh, currently supported is Azure and Google. If you have a defined identity provider, as I have it here, which was newly created with some example values, you can then use a call to migrate it to, for example, Azure. I think the, the functionality should then be added to the console as well at some time. As you have it, migrated as a refresh now the, uh, the console the identity provider gets displayed as an Azure template and all the links and and existing configuration for the IDP is carried over I can say some words about the fix of the setup. We found out that the setup steps 12, 10 and 11 um, don't perform well. And if you have a lot of data, a lot of events for um, especially, and we implemented a better way of handling large data sets there. This is generally for all the future steps as well, or only for 10 and 11? Only for 10 and 11. So last point we implemented register pass keys for a human user. And in this print, we actually modified the request and response object to use the protobuf struct type instead of bytes, so that it's a, a clear adjacent representation of, of the options, the web out and options being passed around. So for this demo, also for the login, so we, we have implemented the passkey login. So for this demo, I would have to start with registration and then we'll do the login. This is basically the same thing. Same thing did last week. Last course, I need my user ID. So now I created a registration code for a user, which I can then use to register passkey. This gives me the public key credential creation options, which is now adjacent. This used to be base 64 encoded, but now it's fell adjacent. Let me just copy this passkey ID because I need it later. And then the creation options. I'll put them right here. I created the small program that will build a response, but this is normally taken care of by the browser. Uh, next thing that I need to do is verify passkey registration. I need the user ID. 
the Trotsky ID and then the JSON that was generated here. I forgot to give it a name. Okay, so now the passkey is registered for the user. Next thing is we can go to the session and we will create a new session. First thing, the user needs to be verified in the session before we can use passkey authentication. We will not do a password check. We will not yet do the passkey check. Instead, we will ask for a challenge for passkey. This will give me a new session with the session token, which I will need to save for later. And then here I get the public key credential request options, which will need to be passed to the web out and client. So the next thing is we go to set session, where we will update the session with the response from the authenticator. So I need to provide my session ID, session token. And now I will activate the passkey check. So here I will pass the application. So the authentication was successful. It gives me a new session token, which we can use for the next request, which is get session. So now we can see the current session where the user is verified and passkey is verified. Password is not verified. So that's it. This is how it works. Yeah, I think we are almost through. The last part would maybe be quickly about the things that are still open. The Apple IDP spike. I did have a look at it and I think it's not a big thing to implement it. I will quickly have a look with Livio on Monday just to know how to write the acceptance criteria so we can take it into the refinement next time. Thank you.